cool was I and logical, keen, calculating, precipitous, acute, and astute. I was all of these. My brain was as powerful as a dynamo, as precise as a chemist's scale, and as penetrating as a scalpel. And to think of it, I, only 18. Love is a Fallacy by Max Schulman. It is not often that one so young has such a giant intellect. Take, for example, P.T. Bellows, my roommate at the university. Same age, same background, but dumb as an ox. A nice enough fellow, you understand, but nothing upstairs. Emotional type, unstable, and worst of all, a fattest. To be swept up in every new craze that comes along. To surrender oneself to idiocy just because everyone else is doing it. This, to me, is the acme of mindlessness. Not, however, to pee. I want a raccoon coat. I should have known they'd come back like a fool while I spent all my money on textbooks. And now I can't get a raccoon coat. Petey, why? Look at it rationally. Raccoon coats are unsanitary. They shed, they smell bad, they You don't them. understand. It's the thing to do. Don't you want to be in the swim? No. Well, I do. I'd give anything for a raccoon coat. Anything. 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 Now, it so happened that Petey had something that I wanted. It also happened that I had the raccoon coat my father had worn in 1925. <clears throat> now, I refer to his girl, Polly Espy. I had long coveted Polly Espy. Let me emphasize my desire for this young woman was not emotional in nature. I wanted Polly for a shrewdly calculated reason. I was in law school. In a few years, I would be out in practice. All the successful lawyers I observed were married to beautiful, gracious, intelligent women. With one omission, Polly fitted these specifications perfectly. Beautiful she was, gracious she was, intelligent she was not. In fact, she veered in the opposite direction. But I believe that under my guidance, she would smarten up. <clears throat> Petey, are you in love with Polly Espy? I think she's a keen kid. I don't know if you call it love. Why? Are you going steady or anything like that? Are you... you know. What are you getting at? <clears throat> the coat. Holy Toledo. Holy Toledo! What do you want for it? Your girl. Polly? You want Polly? Mm -hmm. Never! Well, if you don't want to be in the swim, I guess that's your business. Not as if I was in love with Polly or anything like that. That's right. What's well, Polly to me or me to Polly? Not a thing. Here, try on the coat. You look like a mound of dead raccoons. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Deal? Deal. I had my next date with Polly the following evening. First, I took her to dinner. Gee, that was a delicious dinner! <laughs> a movie? Gee, that was a Marvy movie! <laughs> then I took her home. Gee, I had the same shade time! <clears throat> I went back to my room with a heavy heart. First, she had to be taught to think. Polly, tonight, we're going to talk. Trip! <clears throat> One thing I will say for this girl, you will go far to find another so agreeable. <laughs> we're going to talk about logic. Wow, do! Logic is the science of thinking. Before we can think correctly, we must first learn to examine the common fallacies of logic. Magnificent! <clears throat> the first fallacy we will discuss is called ad misericordium. Wow! <clears throat> now, a man applies for a job, and the boss asks him what his qualifications are. He replies that he has a wife and six children at home. The wife is a helpless cripple. The children have no clothes, no shoes, there are no beds in the house, no coal in the cellar, and um, winter is coming. Now, 
fact, I, it's no argument. You see, a man never asks the boss's questions about his qualifications. Instead, he feels the boss's sympathy. He can be a fallacy, a bad Do you have a handkerchief? Do you understand? I think we better call it tonight. Um, we'll have another session tomorrow evening. I had a perfectly terrific evening. <laughs> I went glumly home to my room. The girl simply had a logic proof head. But maybe somewhere in the extinct crater of her mind, a few embers still smoldered. Maybe somehow I could fan them into a flame. The next fallacy we'll discuss is called hasty generalization. I thought we already talked about that one. Hmm. Well, ah, we will do this one. It's called hypothesis contrary to fact. Sounds yummy! <laughs> <clears throat> um, now listen. Madame Curie had not left a photographic plate in a drawer with a chunk of pitch blend the world today would not know about radium. True, true. Did you see that movie about Walter Pidgeon? It's so dreamy. Oh, he just frightened me. <laughs> Listen, if Madame Curie had not happened to leave a photographic plate, maybe she would have figured about radium at some later date. Maybe any number of things would have happened. You could not start with a hypothesis that they're not true and draw any supportable conclusions from it. They ought to put Walter Pigeon in more movies. I hardly ever see him anymore. One more chapter. Just one more. Just the next one. That should work. Yeah. <clears throat> next fallacy is called poisoning the well. How cute! <laughs> Two men are having a debate. The first one gets up and says, My opponent is a notorious liar. You cannot believe a word he's going to say. Now, Polly, think. Think hard. What's wrong? It's not fair. It's not a bit fair. What chance has the second man got if the first man calls him a liar before he can even start talking? Right! 100% right! Polly, I'm proud of you! The first man has hamstrung his opponent before he can even start talking. He poisoned the well before anyone could drink from it. You see, my dear, these things aren't so hard. All you have to do is think, concentrate, examine, and evaluate. Come now, let's through everything we've learned. Fire away! <laughs> I began a long and patient review of everything that I had taught her. Poisoning the well, hypothesis contrary to fact, hasty generalization. I kept hammering away without a let up. I had made a logician out of Polly. She was a fit wife for me at last, a suitable mother for my well-heeled children, and a proper hostess for my many mansions. I decided to acquaint her with my feelings at our very next visit. Polly, tonight, we will not discuss fallacies. Aww! My dear. We have now spent four evenings together, and it is clear we are well matched. Hasty generalization! <laughs> I beg your pardon? Hasty generalization. How can you say we are well matched on the basis of only four days? The dear child has learned her lessons well. <clears throat> four days is plenty, my dear. Polly, I love you. You are the world to me. The moon, the stars, the constellations of outer, 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 outer space. Please, my dear, stay a little steady with me. For if you will not, life will be meaningless. I will languish. I will refuse my meals. I will wander the face of the earth, a shambling, hollow eye. And Miss Accordium. <clears throat> will or will you not go steady with me? I will not. And why not? Because this afternoon I promised Petey Bellows, your roommate, I would go steady with him. What? The rat! You can't go out with him, Polly! He's a liar! He's a cheat! He's a rat! Put him in the well and stop shouting! I think shouting must be a fallacy, too. Huh! All right, you're a logician. Let's look at this logically. How could you possibly choose Petey Bellows over me. Look at me. A tremendous student. A brilliant intellectual. A man with an assured future. 
Look at Titi, a knothead, a jitterbug, a man you'll never know where his next meal is coming from. Can you give me one logical reason why you should go steady with Petey Bellows? I certainly can. And what is that? He's got a raccoon coat. 